So thank you so much for staying up until this late to join us for the Future of Payment panel. And today we have a very distinguished crowd. So we'll start with Alexander, who is the co-founder of a Berlin-based payment process startup called SumUp. We have Ohad Maimon, EVP Business Development and Strategy at Lumicard. We have Igal Rotem, CEO of Credorox and also an investor. And we have Yuval Tal, uh, President and CEO of Pioneer. So thank you very much for joining us. And today we're going to discuss one of the most interesting subsectors of fintech, which is the payment. A subsector which is on the rise with many new entering fintech each year annually. And we are seeing that the profound technological changes that have taken place in the last decades have basically changed substantially both the landscape and the settings for financial and service industry and how consumers are interacting with them. And we're seeing that this innovation have brought new alternative payment models into life, such as the mobile wallet, such as P2P, such as real time, digital currency, and others. And my question to you is, on which of these solutions do you see the most profound development and adaptations in recent years? I will try to take uh, this f first question and uh, maybe disappoint a bit. <laughs> I don't think that we have seen a very profound change in the way we do payments up until today. I think that mobile payments is only the beginning of something that I call device-based payments, which is the start of a real revolution. But if we are talking about profound changes, we should expect something that is a real change to the industry as we talk about contextual forms of payment and when I'm talking about changes to payment, I really think that the change will come when we see artificial intelligence meet payments and when we will see things that will do payments with other things. So if people are talking a lot about Internet of Things, I'm talking about the payment of things today. And I think that this will be the real profound change for payments. And I will put aside for a minute the digital cryptocurrencies or the digital currencies that everybody is talking about today. Okay. Um, let me try to be the, um, the party pooper. <laughs> um, I think the, the biggest change is going to be the move from cash to plastic. I think it's so obvious, but it's not happening. It's not. It's not. Even though many define it as the post-cash era. Now, I want to ask the audience, how many countries in the world are excluding cash? Only one. Sweden have announced that till 2020, they probably will eliminate the use of cash in the country. Guys, one country in the world. The technology is there. The need is obvious. It's not happening. And why do you think is that? A, a variety of many, many things, and we can discuss about it. But if, if I need to kind of put a mark on something that will change much bigger industry than, than just the payment, is the use of plastic. Think about the, the implication of tax evasion, crime, insurance. Because everything that is being done to the plastic can be monitored, can be uh, uh, reviewed, can be backtracked, can be insured, can be treated totally different. But it's not happening. So people are talking about cryptocurrency and blockchain. And I have, as an engineer, I have a lot of respect to blockchain. blockchain. It's a bon ton. Guys, when I transfer money from one side to another, do I care if this is being done with a smoke in the air or whether this is using ISO 8583? Do you know how uh, uh, your money is being moved from one bank to another? Do you care? What you care is that it will be done fast and cheap. And it's, a, it's not a matter of technology, it's a matter of regulation and decision. Okay? 
uh, mobile companies have charged us a fortune 10 years ago. They don't do that anymore. Why? Because of 4G? No. They are forced by regulation and forced by competition to lower the prices. So I think that there are a bigger changes than, than, than this buzzword or, or the other. Um, I, I see a lot of baby revolutions. I think in Israel specifically, if you look at uh, Get, it's a revolution. So there's Get and McDonald's and there's a whole bunch of application that you don't need anything. And soon you'll be able to have a whole full life without any, any vehicle other than mobile. That's, I think that adds up to be pretty significant revolution. Uh, I see uh, Pepper and Beat. I think it's a pretty nice revolution uh, in Israel. Uh, took off very nice. Um, so I see a lot of revolutions. Uh, from a pioneer perspective, we see a significant reduction in friction of doing business between countries. So the international part become a non-event. Uh, even in Israel, people buy from Deal Extreme all the time. Anyone who buys from Google Play is an international transaction. So there's a lot of international transaction that goes on and now it becomes seamless. So that's, that's a big deal. As it grows with numbers, that's very significant. Uh, there's a lot of other bureaucratic hurdles between uh, on the international front, but as they become smoother and smoother, there's much more business to be made between countries. So, oh, so no, no, no. I'm, I'm very much drawn between um, what you guys just said. I think the really big revolution is not happening yet, so the payment of things um, and the 100% card payment market. At the same time, we started back in 2012, with card acceptance for small merchants, which was a pretty big revolution at this time. We're, we're still very far away from the high innovation, but compared to where the market was five years ago, I see a lot of stuff happening and a lot of fintechs becoming pretty much relevant um, on the global stage. We're by far not at the end of the, of the journey, but I think we're probably in the first quarter in, and there's a lot more to happen there. So it's very interesting to learn that all four of you agree that we're only at the beginning of this uh, fintech revolution in terms of payment. So uh, we'll wait to see what lies ahead. Also in that term, we're also facing the force of how do banks cooperate and basically deals with these changes. As many innovation and development are entering into force, they are changing the bank's traditional role as being the payment processors. So these kind of changes lies also a challenge and an opportunity for banks in order to build a concrete strategy. Do you think that banks today have been able to force, to basically adopt to these changes successfully? And if not, would you recommend them anything else to do? Uh, let me take um, this one um, to start with. So, I, I think that it's, um, again, it's becoming very popular to say, oh, banks are going away, uh, they are old, they are slow movers. Everything is, is correct and, and not correct at the same time. Um, I'm sure that some of you are very much aware that uh, uh, one of the most uh, um, innovative and active incubators are coming from, from, from the banks. So City have a uh, an incubator and, and Barclay, uh, Barclay Card have an incubator and many others. So the banks understand that the change is happening and it's happening here and now. Um, I think that they realize that the change cannot come from, from, from the inside and therefore they are willing to adopt uh, changes from the outside. I think that banks are here to stay. They will, they will change, they will be modified. Some very, very selected activities may go out of the banks. The best example is peer-to-peer um, -peer and, and I would say payday loans. I'm not sure how many of you are aware of uh, a company called Wanga, but Wanga is a UK company that, uh, that uh, was established less than 10 years ago, and Wanga gives more uh, individual loans than Barclays and uh, Royal Bank of Scotland combined. Okay, these two banks have a more history than, uh, than I think each of them more than 100 years. So this kind of activity can go outside of the banks. 
other banks will, will fade away? No, we will see consolidation, we will see um, uh, less branches, we'll see more digital banks. So I think that they're his thing. What was the question? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, it depends. It depends on the bank. But overall, I'm not worried about the presence of the banks. Specifically in, in Tel Aviv, in Israel, the banks are fairly advanced. There's a beautiful initiative, and we mentioned before, Beat and Pepper. And I think it's a beautiful twist because suddenly social payments become part of banks, and it's uh, viral, and people adopt it, and you don't need to send money based on the other person bank information you just send it to their number to the contact details via the phone so i think they actually in israel the adoption of the bank is a very impressive uh, as eagle mentioned there are a bunch of i mean every bank have multiple licenses to do stuff so i think in many cases companies can work with the banks to take uh, some part of that but for the for the most part the whole existence of the fintech industry is based on relationship between the banks and the fintech companies. There is no real way to replace banks, unless in specific niches. You need to put the money somewhere, and the bank have access to liquidity and to funds that nobody else will ever have. So it's nice to try to uh, play the game, but there's a lot of room for a lot of industries around the banks, a lot of leftovers, but banks are not in any danger. So, uh, again, in Israel, I, I salute the banks and the initiative and the level of people and the execution capabilities, it's very impressive. I, I'm actually much more positive on banks than I used to be two or three years ago, because as you mentioned, a number of these initiatives, banks are really waking up to the new fintech reality, and they do cooperate a lot or also innovate themselves in-house. And I was actually already thinking of opening a hedge fund for banks, because speaking to most <laughs> European banks, I can give you a thumb up and a thumb down on the number of banks, but most of the time depends on the CEO. When you speak to him for like 20 minutes, you realize whether this is the bank that embraces the future or that's a bank that's left in the last century. And the differences within banks are terrifying, where some are like very far ahead and some have a little bit more homework to do. So I think that uh, as Eagle and, uh, and Yuval said before, banks will not disappear that's for sure i think that we all understand that we are in the age of partnership and i think that banks in israel and financial institutions understand it i would say better than other financial institutions around the world and this is due to the uh, very unique and uh, flourish arena of startups and fintech that we have in israel and i think that i can talk about lumicard so we can we can fairly say that we have launched six products this this year that all of them were based on products that were done with partnership with with other fintech companies we have shown today and demonstrated today a proof of concept that we have done using a blockchain and we have done many things like this so i really understand and i really believe that the banks do understand that we need more and more partnership in order to survive in order to change. That being said, the banks and every financial institution should understand that fintech will attack the sweet spots, the underserved. So if we are talking about small merchants, and we can take the uh, sum up, sum up uh, for example, so you can show the device that you are holding your, in your hand, they have served the underserved, mm -hmm. the small merchants that were not attended at all by the banks and they have given a very good solution for them. And this is why they are so successful. And I think that what we should all understand is that is, is a very simple one. If we do not serve any, you know, if we do not serve the small businesses, they will go somewhere else. They will find a solution at FinTech. And this is exactly what we should understand. I agree, and I do think that we're seeing many more developments that are targeting small and medium enterprises and businesses like you've just mentioned. And it's also interesting to learn how the industry has matured and how everybody used to be afraid from the fintech revolution in terms that they will replace the banks, and yet we're seeing that partnership and collaboration are the directions that we're going to. So up until today, we have seen that the most massive impact of the payment innovation was targeting the retail and consumer payments. And in, recent, in the recent days, we are seeing more and more development towards the corporate payments. 
So I was wondering, in which of the sectors from within corporate payments do you think we will see the most massive development in terms of payments innovation? So corporate payment, I think it's like $50 trillion industry, so that's enough uh, for a lot of families. Um, the, for, for the most part, yeah, sure. <laughs> for the most part, uh, the, it's a business transaction, so it's not just the payment. It's the whole process of reducing friction between companies globally that wants to interact. So you need to be able to address a lot of tax issues, invoicing issues, uh, inventory, um, uh, sometimes just there's a standard of you can get the tax refund only if it's a SWIFT. So there's a lot of bureaucratic uh, hurdles throughout the process. And over time, the more friction will be reduced beyond the payment, the more, much more uh, transaction can be done and it can be much more efficient. And the trade itself is much more efficient. It's not just the payment, so it's a whole solution for uh, for uh, for international the, the 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 biggest issue would be trust right so if you do trade and between china and india then who knows if the product is shipped if the payment will get there or if you send the payments will the product get there so you have a lot of trust that goes to escrow that goes to letter of credit so letter of credit is a huge inefficient process so how do you reconcile that trust issue then you have funding issue because it's all trade finance, right? It's all about being able to get the credit about a product that you didn't sell yet. And that goes into, goes back into credit issue that the banks have. So everything is intertwined, payment, credit, escrow, trust, bureaucracy, everything goes in together. And if it's not going to be one company, but the companies that are going to be able to put this together will feed a lot of families. That, that I promise. I think that uh that B2B or corporate speaking is the next real big thing in payments. So you all can testify about it and can tell about, about Pioneer, but I really think that we should focus uh, on B2B and on enabling payments on B2B. We have heard that last week MasterCard has launched a B2B hub and we should not be surprised about it because today, even in Israel, Igal has mentioned about paying with cash, so we can, t we can tell that most of the business in Israel pay with checks. And this is a thing that we should change. And by the way, this is a thing that we are quite similar to the situation around the world. So I think that we should focus on three main areas, and this is the real big opportunity. The first one is cross-border transactions and FX, which we have a huge opportunity to reduce the cost there. The second one is enabling payments between uh, uh, business to, be, to business. And the third one is making the card payment acceptable with business by virtual cards and by other means. I think that we have a great opportunity there, and I think that this is somewhat, something that all the companies that are standing here will probably be dealing in the next uh, two to three years. Interesting. So we spoke about corporates and the next thing that comes is of course standardization and regulation with the, the PSD22 regulation, the directive which is very much heard of, which is to enter to force on January 2018 and which is supposed to standardize the way that payment methods are being processed on mobiles as well as in web. It is designated to reduce cost and to standardize the entire process. How do you think that the adoption of the PSD2 directive would influence on payment startups? Um, it's, it's a very big topic, uh, the PSD2, and, um, and, and there are many convoluted uh, discussions around that. Um, and I think that it, uh, most of the people are not uh, aware of uh, what it means, the PSD2, which practically enables um, uh, uh, direct debit uh, from a person bank account. So practically eliminate the use of, uh, of a credit card. Um, I'm somewhat skeptical. Uh, the reason why I'm skeptical, because, um, because people need to be willing to uh, give away the luxury, the easiness, and the insurance that is built into the credit card system today. 
And if, if there will not be any pricing alternatives, so you go to a website, you want to buy jeans, you, you see $100 for jeans if you buy with a credit card, and you see $95 for the same jeans if you allow direct debit. Till this moment in time will not happen, and I'm, I'm not sure it will, then why people will do that? I get points on my credit cards. The, the product cost me the same. Why should I give direct debit to my, uh, to my bank account without the ability to return the product, to charge it back, or to do all the things, that, the good things that I can do mm -hmm. with, a, with a credit card? So I'm somewhat doubtful about it. Um, I want to touch a, a one point that, uh, that um, I think worth mentioning relates to your previous uh, question, Rotem. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have experienced recently the great pleasure of trying to send $100,000 US dollars from your bank account to another bank account abroad. <laughs> I'm not sure that many of you have done that, but if you had the pleasure of doing that, good luck. It's becoming a nightmare. We're talking about the fintech and innovation and blockchain and all these good buzzwords. The world is moving backwards. The regulation is causing the entire ecosystem of global e-commerce, global e especially on B2B, to become a nightmare. Now, if you want another nightmare, open an e-commerce company. Register the company in Cyprus or in Luxembourg. Try to get a corporate account. How many weeks, sometimes months, will take till you will be able to open a corporate account for a company that wants to sell and serve the world? Okay? So we're talking about many innovative issues, but in many ways, due to regulation, Things are, 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 are walking backwards. But most regulators become, basically, they hold the banks as their enforcement entity to uh, catch the bad guys. And if they don't, they make them criminally liable, the, the banks. So the banks said, basically, what the hell? Why do you need this? And that, that's, that's a very, very uh, inability in, in uh, trend. So that's, mm. that's a problem. So one quick question, unless you have anything else to add. We're now seeing a new breed of non-banks providers that are providing and processing payments such as Facebook, such as Apple, and even network operators such as Orange, for example, which is to launch a new digital-only bank in France this July. And my question is, what do you think is the implication of non-banks providers entering to the payment domains? To me, it's mainly more competition, whether that's a mm -hmm. non-bank provider providing new products or a bank providing new products. I think it's a very healthy market that's driven by innovation and competition. I could talk about this topic forever, but I see it times yeah. up on the bottom. So, so, you, th so you think that for, this, for the end consumer, it's better, since we will have more choices? Co competition always helps the consumers, mm -hmm. so it will always make it better. Okay. I completely agree. I think that the fact that uh, you see more non-financial institutions going into the financial institution is only making good things for us. It's a barometer of where we should look up to. It gives us an opportunity to improve our products and you know, for, to, to, to find some better opportunities and better results. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good for the industry. That's good for the consumers also. Mm -hmm. I want to make a bet. And I think that um, probably would, within less than five years, Facebook and Google um, and Apple and probably Samsung uh, will become financial institutions. I don't think that they will be commercial banks, but I think they will be financial institutions. Um, Alibaba already done that. There is a small company called Alipay. Uh, Tencent already did that. Mm -hmm. Small company called Tenpay. Uh, Baidu did that with Baidu Wallet, so th 
they go up in, in the value chain, they will make more money. So Alipay is now making more money than Alibaba, yeah. okay? Tenpay makes more money than Tencent. So unfortunately, we're out of time. I'd like to thank you for your patience at such a late hour of the day. And thank you so much, dear panel, for your times and insight. It was very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you.